They will say, because he has done this for you, they will see things in your life that will make it evident that there are streams. There are streams. They will see streams flowing into your life and he will be exalted. He will be exalted among the heathens. He will be exalted upon the earth. Everywhere will experience his exaltation because of you. Makarila kasheteri baba. God is our refuge, but it's also our strength. He's also our present help. Therefore shall we go forth, Lord, in counter-attack, so that he will be exalted among the nations. He will be exalted among the heathens. Makarila kasheteri baba. I don't know about you, but I'm excited about things he's going to do in my life through me because you'll be exalted through me. I will see re I will see streams in my life because there is a river. Makarila Baba. Just lift your Lift up your voice and begin to give him praise. Father, we praise you because of who you are. Mamaka Baba, our strength. Mamaka Sheteri Baba, our refuge. Mamaka Baba, our present help. The one who shall be exalted, O Lord. Maka Sheteri Baba. Maka Baba. Just lift your hands and just give him praise. Harika Sheteri Bobo Hallelujah, hallelujah. In Jesus' name we pray. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen, amen, amen. Let's give the Lord a clap offering. Let's thank him that he has been so good that we are here again to give him praise, to give him worship. No matter how difficult, no matter how joyful, no matter how um, adventurous your week was, there's always a good time to come into the Lord's presence. Hallelujah. David said, I was glad when they said to me, let us go to the house of the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. So we're going to declare high praises unto our God, unto our King. To the Lord Almighty, the one who saves, the one who heals, the one who delivers from dangers seen and unseen. How many times has he revealed his presence in so many ways? Hallelujah. So we are here to give him praise. Amen. Amen. Let the high praise, let the high praise of God. And the victory shall be mine. Let the high praise begin. Let the high praise begin. Oh, let the high praise of God be my mouth. And the victory shall be mine. Let the high Shall be by let the high praise begin. Let the high praise one more time. Let the high praise of God be my mouth and the victory shall be mine. Let the high praise begin. Yeah. 
Hallelujah. He is worthy of our praise. He is worthy of all honor. And we're joining the angels to bless his name this morning. Amen. You're in the presence of your father. So feel free, relax, and give him praise. Hey. Bless the Lord, oh my soul, oh my soul. Worship his holy name. Sing like never before, oh my soul. I worship your hope. Hey, bless the Lord. Bless the Lord, oh my soul, oh my soul. I worship his holy name. Sing like never Sing before. Like Worship your holy name. The sun comes up, the sun comes up. It's a new day, darling. It's time to sing your song again. Whatever may pass and whatever lies before me, let me be singing when the evening comes. Let the Lord of my soul. Worship His holy name. Sing like never before. Oh my soul, I worship Your holy name. You're rich in love and You're slow to anger. Your name is great and Your heart is kind. For all Your goodness, I will keep on singing. Ten thousand reasons, ten thousand reasons for my heart to yeah. Bless the Lord, oh my soul, oh my soul, worship His holy name. We sing like never before, oh my soul, I worship Your holy name. And on that day. The end goes near and my time has come Still my soul will sing your praise on end day Ten thousand years and then forevermore oh, Bless the Lord, oh my soul oh, 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 Worship His holy name Reasons for my heart to hey, bless the Lord, bless the Lord, oh my soul, oh my soul, worship His holy name. We sing like never before, oh my soul, I worship Your holy name. I worship, I worship, I worship your holy I worship your holy name. I worship, I worship, I worship your holy I worship your holy name. Sing like never, sing like never before. Oh my soul, I worship your holy I was 
worship your holy King name. of kings and Lord of all, I bring you I my worship. praise adoration lift him up this morning give him praise worship him worship him the lord has brought you through this week the lord has done magnificent things for you lift him up worship him worship him hallelujah hallelujah glory be to god good morning kicc family good morning Welcome the person beside you. Tell them that you're so glad you're beside you, be sitting beside them, and you may take your seats. Those of you at home, welcome, welcome. Hallelujah, hallelujah. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Glory be to God. It's great to be in the presence of God. It's great to be in life class this morning. Glory to God. On behalf of our senior pastor, Pastor Matthew Ashmeloa, and our resident pastors, Pastor Yemisi Ashmeloa and Pastor Toby Ashmeloa, we'd like to welcome you to this morning's 9 a.m. service. And if this is your first time joining us here at KICC, we'd like to give you a very special welcome this morning. So we'd like for you to please stand to your feet as we welcome you this morning. Hallelujah, hallelujah, glory be to God. And those of you who are joining us for the very first time online, we would like to give you a special welcome. Please go to www.kicc.org.uk slash contact and fill out the relevant form. And we will be in contact with you during the week. Post on the, on the chat where you're joining us from. We'd love to hear where you're joining us from. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Please enjoy the rest of the service and look at the screen for the rest of the announcements. God bless you. Enjoy the service. Hello and welcome to KICC, the church that is raising champions and taking territories. And a special welcome to our online viewers. This is this week's news in brief. KICC resident pastor two, Pastor Toby celebrates his landmark 40th birthday today. Let the elders that rule well be counted worthy of double honors, especially they who labor in the word and doctrine. 1 Timothy 5.17 Pastor Toby is worthy of double honor. Let us appreciate and be a blessing to him. Please rejoice with us and email your congratulatory message to admin at kicc.org.uk. Are you a part of the evangelism challenge, the 10 by 100? Go out of your way and win 10 souls by the 10th of April, 2023. Invite them to one of KICC's actual services and receive a gift from Pastor Matthew. Make 2023 your year of witnessing for Christ. Do you need a prophetic word that addresses your situation? Then it's time for you to join Pastor Matthew Ashimolo at the seven days of the prophetic service. Come expecting, believing God for revelation, transformation, release of grace, specific prophetic words to individuals. Don't miss this powerful service until the 12th of March. And the venue is KICC Prayer City. Chatham in Kent. The time is from 11 a.m. Join host Pastor Matthew Ashimolowo for the overflow of God that will cause you to be revived, renewed, 
restored, refilled, and so much more. This is from Sunday the 19th to Friday the 24th of February. We will be meeting weekdays at the KICC Land of Wonders E17 9AH from 6.30 p.m. And the Sunday service at KICC Prayer City ME5 9QG and the time is 6 p.m. Come expectant and God will overflow your life with his goodness. The first KBI Extra Classes for Baptismal Membership and Workers is scheduled to be held on Saturday the 11th and the 18th of February 2023. The time will be from 10 a.m. to 5 p.m. and it's going to be via Zoom. Interested candidates should please send an email to kbi at kicc.org.uk for an introductory questionnaire to be sent out. The deadline is 8th of February at 11 p.m. Candidates must attend both Saturdays to qualify for the interview. The KICC office is looking to recruit for the following positions. A business finance officer, it's a full-time position located in Chatham in Kent. A TV scheduling assistant, also a full-time position in Chatham, Kent. A production stock edit assistant, which is a part-time role shared between Hull Street and Prayer City in Chatham. A media assistant, also a part-time role for Chatham in Kent. And a weekend editor, a part-time role that would also be based in Chatham in Kent. If you are interested in this post, please email admin at KICC .org.uk for an application pack. The closing date for the receipt and completion of application pack is Wednesday the 8th of February 2023. Applicants must have a full right to work in the UK. For more information, visit kicc.org.uk forward slash careers. KICC Young Adults Ministry Royals invite you to join them for a night of worship and prayer on Tuesday the 31st of January. This will be held at KICC Land of Wonders Hall Street in Walthamstow, London, E79 AH and the time is from 7 p.m. We once again look forward to hosting you. Our Sunday evening service, the prophetic and the fearless. Attend the KICC evening service where God has a prophetic word for you. The date is every Sunday and the venue is Prayer City at KICC ME5 9QG and it's from 6 p.m. Join Pastor Matthew for the morning glow services every weekday morning at 6 a.m. It is a powerful hour of prayer and prophecy not to be missed. Streaming live on all KICC social media platform and we look forward to reading your testimonies. Have you thought about becoming a member or a steward of KICC? Join us for baptismal membership and stewardship classes every Wednesday at 6 p.m. If you are interested in this opportunity, send an email to kbi at kicc.org.uk and an introductory questionnaire will be sent out to you. The Global Bible Study with Pastor Matthew takes place every Wednesday at 7 p.m. via all KICC social media platforms. Caring at Fellowship CHF is every Friday from 7 p.m. to 8 p.m. For the nearest center to you, please call the church office on 0208 525 0000 or visit kicc.org.uk forward slash iChurch forward slash chf dash materials the new tomorrow tnt services are held every sunday at 11 a.m the venue is joseph academy prayer city registration is required via events bright for more information and previous services follow tnt on instagram king's kids services are also held on sundays at 11 a.m registration is also required via events bright the venue is Prayer Palace, Grand Hall, KICC, Prayer City, ME59 QG. The one big change at the KICC Land of Wonders services at Hull Street. There will be one big morning service at KICC Land of Wonders. The time is 9 a.m. to 11 a.m. from Sunday the 5th of February and the venue is KICC Land of Wonders 468 to 474 Hull Street, Walthamstow, London, E17 9AH. The French Connection Service will be held at 2 p.m. Please share this information with your family, friends, and colleagues. 
We look forward to having you. For more information about KICC or any of these announcements, call the church office, email events at kicc.org.uk, download the KICC app from iTunes or Google Play, follow KICC on all social media platforms. You can share your testimony at kicctv.org.uk. Travel to KICC on free return shuttle buses from various locations in London and Kent. Visit kicc.org.uk. You can also watch KICC TV on Sky Channel 589. This is the end of this week's announcements. This month has been declared the month of the new. Thank you for listening and enjoy the rest of the service. Praise the Lord. We're glad Hallelujah. you watched today's service. Yeah. For prayer, call O2. So we serve a God who is awesome. A God who is magnificent. And so many things that he has done and he has shown his hand in our lives. I'm just going to dedicate this song to you, Father, because you are God.
You are God alone, and you alone are God. It's all you. You stand alone, and you do great and mighty things. It's all you. Tell me who can make a way. Tell me who can raise the dead. Tell me who can heal the sick. Oh, oh God, God, God. That's all I can say. There's nothing else to say. God, God, that's who you are. of kings. He is the God Almighty. We honor you, O God. We give you all our worship. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. To the King, to the Lord, we give you praise. We adore your name, O God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He's our God. He's our King. You may be seated. Turn to your neighbor and tell them it's that wonderful part of the service. Tell them it's my best time of the service. Amen. Let's just begin to prepare our hearts to give. And I will share something with you. I like this part of worship and service because it's a time of exchange. Somebody say exchange. exchange. You know, you give and you receive. There's an exchange between the natural and the supernatural. There's an exchange between me and God. Turn your Bibles to the book of Luke chapter 6 and I will share something with you as you prepare our offerings to give. I know many of us give electronically, many of us uh, give online. Whether you're online this morning or whether you're seated here, let's just look at what the Bible says. It's a familiar passage, but I'll share with you. The Bible says they give and it shall be given unto you. Then it begins to describe what shall be given unto you. And it says, good measure pressed down shaken together and running over many of us have heard that before but let me tell you what it, it means to me a good measure is an appropriate measure in other words it's the right measure you know if you want to pour something from a cone or from uh, you know those who studied physics from a cone into a square a full cone might not necessarily make a full square. You understand that? So he will match your need. He will match the area where you are expecting a blessing and increase by giving you the good measure that fits your need, that fits your situation. So he will give you good measure. Now, when not, not only is it going to be a good measure, it's going to be pressed down. Many of us know, you know, when you press something down, what happens? It takes in more. Not only will it be pressed down, there will be a shaking together so that inside of it, all the things that are ought to be there, there will be no empty space. In other words, God is a giver of density. 
Hallelujah. So the exchange we are expecting today is one that is going to be dense. And then the other thing he says is with the same measure that you met, with all shall it be measured unto you. We are going to give our fights. We are going to give our offerings to him. If you are online, look at the screen for the different ways you can give. But listen before you give. The Bible is saying there, with the same measure that you give, it shall be given unto you. So let your own giving be with gratitude as a measure. Let your own giving be with respect. Let your own giving be with expectation from him. Let your own giving be with an agenda. You know, Pastor Mr. will always tell us, give your seed an assignment. Let it be with an agenda and let it be with thanksgiving, with a grateful heart. So let us prepare our seed now. And if you're ready with your seed, whether you're giving by your tablet or phone or whether you're giving with your envelope, I want you to stand up and lift unto God and begin to wrap your own measure around it. Let it be a measure of expectation, a measure of thanksgiving. The Bible says with the same measure, let it be a measure of abundance of gratitude upon your heart. Hallelujah. Makari Lokoshete. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this opportunity to give to you because we know that there will be exchange. Father, we have an expectation. We are grateful because you are the abundance giver. Father, Lord, as we prayed earlier, God, in different areas of our lives, Lord God, there shall be a return of streams, streams of plenty. In this year, Lord, in this month, that is a month of new things, in this year, oh God, that is a year of evident progress, oh God, streams will come back into our lives, oh God. Oh, Rababa, good measure, appropriate measure, timely measure, shaking together, pressed down. And Father, it shall also be so much that it's, 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 it's reached its density, but it will continue to overflow. So shall it be, Lord, in our lives as we give to you. Oh, Father, we'll bring our fights also into, unto you, oh God. Mama, the enemy is defeated, the devourer is defeated on our behalf. We give you praise. Abundance, oh God. Open doors, Lord, shall be our portion. In Jesus' name we pray. Let's give with joy. Hallelujah.
entertain him with our praise and our worship we sing because we want to give him worship we sing because we want to thank him for who he is and what he has done I don't know how your week was but I know mine God was victorious because I cried unto the Lord and he answered me I cried and he did not leave me forsaken so as we worship 
build your throne and as we worship build your throne and we worship we we thank you because every covenant everything you have promised concerning us will come to pass our eyes will see it our mouths will testify this year is going to be great this year will be awesome our hands will handle your blessing our eyes will see the goodness of the lord in the name of jesus we praise you 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 and as we lift you up somebody's been set free people have been blessed lives have been transformed someone has been giving a testimony the enemy has been silenced the hand of the Lord is stretched. Victory belongs to you, Jesus. Take the glory this morning. In Jesus' name. Come on, bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. Reach out, welcome two or three people. Tell them they look nice, they look lovely, they look wonderful. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Praise the Lord. Welcome to this morning's live class. Trust in the Lord that you will be blessed. And you will be highly favored. We always tell a funny little story to make you smile a little bit. Every time you come for live class, a man was awarded contract to paint the externals of a church building. And uh, this man decided to shortchange the church. They paid him so much, but he bought little paint and only painted one coat. And then the thing dried up and began to fall off. The storm gathered. The rain was about to fall. There was a lot of lightning. And as the rain began, it practically blew off whatever paint the man put on the wall. Suddenly there was lightning and heavy thunder. And out of the thundering came a voice that said, repaint, repaint. <laughs> this morning we want to start a new subject in life class that will ginger you and challenge you in this year of evident progress. I pray for you that you will truly make progress. You will exceed your own expectation. You will go far. You will achieve. You will break grounds. You will reach places you never thought you would reach. Shout a powerful amen. amen. For this to happen, you've got to cooperate with the Holy Spirit. So our teaching this morning is on the power of diligence. The power of diligence. The Bible says, seest thou a man who is diligent in all his ways. He shall stand before kings. He will not stand before ordinary men. In other words, a man's gift will do what? Make room for him. But how does your gift make room for you? By you being diligent. Some people are gifted, but the lack of diligence makes them to be ordinary instead of extraordinary. When you are diligent, doors open for you. You cannot just say, I have prayed. You've got to be diligent in everything you do, even in your spiritual life. Diligence is a necessity for you to break through, for you to walk in the dimension of favor, the blessing, the grace, the breakthrough, the testimony God has for you. Somebody say diligence. Diligence is a necessity for you to access all that God has for you. And so this morning, I pray that you will be blessed. So what is diligence? Diligence is a key to obtaining the blessings of God. You want to receive all that God has, you have to be diligent. All the stories Jesus told in the parables, they show us diligence. The, man, the three men who were given talents, the two who were diligent prospered. The one who was indolent, rather was, down, was sent into a damnation. What is diligence? To be diligent means to approach what you are doing with eagerness, with earnestness, and with care. 
So if you are a painter, you do not paint like that man who put only one coat. You, can't, you don't want to wait for a voice that tells you, so you repaint. You've got to be diligent. There are people who complain that they are not getting business. But I tell you, if people find you to be truly very diligent, even where your price is higher, sometimes you'll forget about the price. They know you will deliver. Is somebody hearing me? Diligence is shown in your eagerness, in your earnestness, in your care. Diligence is a matter of the heart. And diligent hearts always produce good. When you have a heart that is so totally sold out to achieving your dream, your vision, and you are diligent with what you do, when people expect you to fail, you will succeed. Amen. You know, there are people who think some areas of life are easy. You find some people, they just, they just go online and register a company with company house. It takes only 10 minutes to register a company, but it takes a lifetime to run a good one. Is somebody hearing me? Anyone can register. Pa, 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 a few pounds. Hey, blah, hey, you have a company, East West uh, Limited. Oh, back and forth engineering. Whatever you want to call it, in a few minutes, you've registered. You are now a company owner. But if you will truly succeed, will now require that we see your level of diligence. Diligence will be the thing that helps you when people reject your proposal. Diligence will be the thing you need when you think, my God, when I put this product out, people will be packing it like, and the people just look at it, it's nice, and they threw it down. Diligence will make you to keep your dream alive, your vision alive, and know that, hey, this project may have failed, but I'm not a failure. I, I hope I'm speaking to someone. So the Bible says in Ecclesiastes 11 verse 6, in the morning, Sow your seed. In the evening, do not withhold your hand and not continue to be diligent. For you do not know which will prosper. Either this or that, whether both alike will be good. In other words, you've got to learn how to cast your bread upon the waters so that you can find it after many days. When you fold your hand, the Bible says a little, a little slumber, a little folding of the hand, and poverty overtakes the person. Go and check in many places where there's poverty. They are busy blaming someone. Government, systems. You see people drag, in fact, they have a way of walking. They drag their feet as if it's a style. In fact, when lazy people are coming, you are telling, if they're wearing flip-flops, you can palakpa, 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 palakpa. They are, even to lift their leg requires an anointing. <laughs> but you mustn't see them where they eat. They like food. Lazy people like food. It's amazing. And they also like nice things. When they go window shopping, they know the things that are the best. If they are describing uh, designers like this, you'll be in shock. As if they were part of the designing. I see you overcome. Amen. I see you prosper. Amen. Somebody sc scream, I shall, I shall prosper. Make diligence your watchword in 2023. And you will be the most sought after in any field of your chosen career. It's not enough to pray. The church needs to wake up. That's the reason why we see a lot of people who don't know God who have no relationship with Jesus Christ, prosper in certain remits because some Christian is seated somewhere and that's why you find KRCC is not a place where we open the church building seven days a week. We want you to go walk. Tell your neighbor, go and walk. <laughs> Praise God. Every time I go preach in Accra, Ghana, I also go to play golf. There's this church by the golf course in Achimota. Every, every morning they open. You'll be hearing them screaming, God, give us breakthrough. I say, shut up. <laughs> I feel like going to tell the pastor, shut up. Send your members out. Let them go and work. Is somebody hearing me this morning? So when you see a person who is, who is diligent in their ways, they'll be prosperous. 
even the things of the spirit you need to pursue God diligently you want to know the word you got to pursue diligently you want to pray you got to pray the prayer diligently you want to you want to pursue for your victory in your Christian life it has to be diligence praise the Lord diligence may rather be regarded as a combination of both hard work and patience because being persistent requires patience some things don't immediately deliver to you your dreams your vision your anticipation the things you want it requires that you keep on keeping on keep on keeping on then one day there'll be a breakthrough Amen. praise God I said praise the Lord there are some seeds, particularly the hard nut seeds. Hard nut seeds like palm kernel, from which you get the palm oil, they don't deliver to you easily. They don't even grow out of the earth easily. Or the bamboo. If you sow a bamboo seed, you have to wet the same spot for three years. Nothing showing. Nothing. They'll just see you wetting an empty ground and there'll be no, a, a, a bare ground. You'll be, people will be wondering. Why are you watching this background? You say, I saw the seed there. And I say, where is it? You did it every day for three years. The only thing is that day the bamboo shoot breaks out. In three to six weeks, it grows 18 meters. And then it is the most difficult to kill. It took time to gather strength. I know it is the most difficult to kill because when we're building the space, for KRCC's university in my hometown, wherever the bamboo was, was difficult to kill. We will cut it, it will grow again. We pour, they say, pour diesel oil or whatever kind of oil. Throw this used to, I don't tell them, those environmentalists. We threw some, <laughs> we threw some disused tires there. Burnt it, scratched the ground. A little rain. It grows again. You say, this I wish human beings are like this. To have nine lives like this thing. Somebody say diligence. diligence. Say it again, diligence. diligence. It is also one of the most important attributes of a good person. It is so easy to promote a diligent person. Nobody will argue. If you are arguing because the person is diligent, it's because you are lazy. Diligent people are so easy to promote. Ask anybody who has a business, who has an enterprise, who has a vision. They love diligent people. In fact, they are less, they give you less aggravation. Squeaky wheels make the most noise. Have you noticed your car? The place you give the greatest attention is where there's always trouble. And I tell you, lazy people, they know how to give trouble. They know the constitution on labor law, how many hours they must work, on what provision you must give, how they should, how they should sit down. How many... Jesus, man. Some diligent people don't even know it's break time. And even when it's break time, they felt like taking some things on break with them. I hope I'm speaking about you today. I pray for you today. May God prosper you. But believers need to wake up to realize there is no room for a lazy man in the kingdom of Jesus Christ. No room for a lazy man. There used to be these, you know, the vehicles that apply the roads in Africa. They always have a statement on the back of their vehicle. One of them will say, there's one popular one that says, no bread for a lazy man. And it's true. No bread for a lazy man. Now let's see some insights. Some insights on diligence. Diligence is, is a prerequisite to seeing victory. You want to see victory in your life? You, you need diligence. For example, to be able to conquer an enemy that comes against you, you need to diligently take your stand. Diligence is a prerequisite for victory in life. Diligent people always make a steady, consistent effort to accomplish their goals. When they meet with mountains, they, 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 they are not stopped. That's why Jesus, that's why the book of Proverbs, you go to the ants, you sluggard. I didn't understand that scripture. Until this estate we are building in Africa, we met 60 ant hills in a small space. Some of them are four, three meters, four meters. Four meters is from the ground to here, built by ants. 
We brought everything down, cleared it. In, in, uh, by the time it was May, we had cleared everything. Two, three days ago, I saw another ant hill. This time it is five meters. Five meters. How did this, how did this ant grow a, I mean, I said grow, build. If you don't grow a house, you build it. How did they? <laughs> because it seems like it was growing. We can't see them in father. The funny part of this one is that it is surrounded by some little puddle of water. And yet, they built it close to five meters. They are so diligent. So diligent. Each one of them know their role. But some people, they want all the best things in life, but they are not ready for the diligence. They have an entitlement spirit. They have a spirit of entitlement. I have a right. I have a right. It's my right. Is this, is this. Diligent people never give up. Diligence shows up even when you are young and you are preparing for examination. The one who felt he knows everything will one day be shocked because he wasn't diligent. Because he was not diligent. You find that you can become the best in life if you can be diligent. Praise God. In fact, sometimes gifted people are the ones to be careful. To be careful because they know that two, three things, I'll just put it together, it'll look nice. But when you are diligent, you take it beyond nice. You take it to a level that is higher than high. Praise God. Yeah. Diligence qualifies you for leadership. I tell you, any nation that puts people who have not shown diligence in places of power, they have banished the future. They have cursed the future generation. People should not rise in any enterprise without showing that they are diligent people. But when you are diligent, somehow rooms are made for you. Somehow the door opens for you. In fact, at a point, your diligence makes people to forget their prejudice. In 1996, a young man left China. Couldn't speak one English word. Not one English word. When he left China, he had only seen a computer once or twice. But he left to go to the United States for his master's degree. While he was in China, he had begun tinkering with an idea of being able to see someone in another city because his fiance lived in another city of China and they only saw once a year. So he desired a way to see her on a regular basis. He gets to America and he finds himself working in a place where they were just beginning to tinker with something that can make you see someone on the other side. And gradually began to work. He showed his expertise as a, as a, as a person who is, in, who is a technician, who is into technology. And he showed that he had ideas. They showed prejudice against him because his English was heavily accentuated. Not only was it heavily accentuated, you know, when you come from another culture, you transliterate your language into English, and sometimes you put the subject before the predicate, or the predicate before the subject. <laughs> you know, it's like Emmanuel. In Hebrew, Emmanuel makes sense, but in English it doesn't, because Emmanuel means with, God, with us, God. You can't say with us, God. Imanu is with us. El is God. So it's not the way English is spoken in English, the subject must be before the predicate. It should be El Imanu. So where are the Emmanuels here today? <laughs> We're changing your name to El Imanu from today. <laughs> this man went through all this. But then his gifting began to come out despite the prejudice, despite refusing to promote him. And he just persisted. Because if you keep looking for the faces of those who are prejudiced against you and who don't want to promote you, you then say, I'm even tired. I'm even doing too much. No. One day your gift will speak for you. Yeah. And if they don't know your value, God will make room for you. Yeah. I thought somebody would shout a better amen. amen. This man, eventually they made him senior manager from senior manager. They made him a director. After being a director, they made him vice president of a little corner. After a while they put in, they put a bar. 
even though he brought ideas that can make them create a system that you'll be able to see 50 people, 100 people. Their competitors made, but the images were not strong. Eventually, this young man came with an idea that can make people see uh, each other, up to 2,500 of them. In fact, they just say it's not possible. He went looking for sponsors and for investors. Some people who had believed in him put their money in it. Eventually, the thing grew. Eventually, the thing became worth a billion dollars. Eventually, it became $113 billion. He's the founder of Zoom. Today, you use Zoom. Imagine if he had rejected himself like other people rejected him. You see, diligence will make people to... They will have to learn your surname. Even if it is the most complicated, you know, Mahashalal Hashbaz. That's the longest name in the Bible. Mahashalal Hashbaz. It has about 14 letters. But when you know the meaning, you want it because it means run quickly to your blessing. God said to, to, to Isaiah, call your second name, your second son, Mahashalal Hashbaz, which means run quickly to the blessing from the battle. Praise God. Amen. Diligence has power. It qualifies you for leadership. Amen. Somehow, when I say leadership, I'm not talking of when people elevate you. I'm talking of when grace raises you. Amen. Somebody will be raised by grace today. Amen. If you are the one, shout, I receive. In, in Romans 12, verse 8, it says, He who exalts in exaltation, he who gives with liberality, he who leads with diligence, he who shows mercy with cheerfulness. In other words, leadership should be with diligence. Praise God. I said, praise the Lord. You know, people will talk about people who have prospered, but they don't see their diligence. They don't see their hard work. They don't see the extra mile they go. I remember being in the same flight with the wealthiest black man, Ali Kudangute, in this first class cabin, there were 14. It's an, an 11 p.m. flight to, into London. We reach here at 5 a.m. Before the flight took off, 90% of the guys in that cabin have slept. They've slept. They don't have any scratch of his money. This guy did not sleep. He had a meeting in London. He was studying his notes. He could have sent somebody else, but I don't know what size it was. But this guy decided to study his own notes reading the notes, studying the notes, study till 12, study till 1. I mean, following day is Sunday, me, I had to sleep because when I land, I'm preaching early in the morning, man. I woke up 2 a.m. to go to the bathroom. He's still studying his notes. Then I said, no wonder. You know, some people will just say, oh, the government favors, you know, people always have a reason for your blessing. You are the one. You don't go explain it to anyone. The day you begin to explain the reason for your breakthrough, you are coming down to their level. Somebody scream, I'm rising. I'm rising. Say it again, I'm rising. I'm rising. Never explain. Particularly people who you are, they are your colleagues, they are your schoolmates, they are your relations, or they are people who are older than you, and probably you come from a culture of a lot of respect. Some people, it's just their age that deserve respect. Outside of that, nothing. N-O-T-H, I-N-G. Nothing. They have not, all they do is remind you that they are older than you. But you can't see any track record of achieving anything. I see you rising. I said, I see you rising. Diligence qualifies you in your service to God. The Bible says, not lagging in, 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 in diligence, but fervent in spirit, serving the Lord. You know, <laughs> it's not enough to carry the Bible and open it. It's important to be diligent. To share whatever I'll share with you takes hours of preparation. To share another message in the 11 a.m. service takes hours of preparation. To hear from the Lord is not something that is a walk through the park. And you can't say, I've been in this thing a long time. I know what to do. No, because each day is unique. 
you came into the service today with some unique need may God minister to you amen. shout amen powerfully amen. diligence multiplies God's grace to you diligence multiplies God's grace to you seest thou a man who is diligent in all his ways he will not stand before ordinary men he will only stand before kings may there be a rising in your life may there be a lifting in your life may God take you to new dimensions new grace new blessings in the name of Jesus the Bible says second Peter chapter 1 verse 5 but also for this very reason giving all diligence adding to your faith virtue and to virtue knowledge giving all diligence practically being totally submitted to diligence don't start a business and you open any time you like don't run a business and because you were profitable this year you think you will not be wiped out <laughs> if you are not diligent you will not be there and then when we say diligence diligence with focus diligence with focus don't go about other people's business diligence with focus praise God I say praise the Lord I see you prosper I see doors opening God taking you from levels to levels grace to grace favor to favor in the name of Jesus diligence exposes the gift and calling of God in you diligence exposes the gift and calling of God in you I was just playing with TikTok yesterday and I saw this guy he's, he's run he's, he's lost his mind he's walking on the streets of Africa and he stands there and he begins and, and the people were recording him and he begins to dole out names of people they went to uni together man some of these guys one of them is even at a, an almost a managing director level at HSBC here in the UK mentioned oh that one is now a lecturer in UCLA he knows where each person is but he's walking the streets and he begins to tell the story of how he was chasing girls when he was uni that's his own testimony that's his only diligence and how he drank a lot who knows maybe in the process of the drinking they put some shisha in the drink or whatever and now blow his mind you see if you miss diligence you run with the wrong company and when you run with the wrong company you mess up your own life you will excel amen. you will succeed amen. anyone hearing me this morning let your amen be loud amen. I say again you will excel amen. you will succeed amen. you're young and you're still in college you're in secondary school you're in uni put aside all those games one day you own the factory you know, some kids would say, if I don't have it, oh, if I don't have it, I'm going to die. If you have parents like mine, they'll just look at you. When you are done with your shaking, you better pick your book and read. I cannot forget, I think the year must be very long ago, something like 1961. A, a kind of heart came out in my country, in northern part. Everyone was buying it. I cried for hours for my dad to buy that cup. The man told me how much that money, how much it will feed us. I said, I don't care. I need the cap. The guy didn't buy the cap. Oh. <laughs> I was brilliant, but he didn't look there. You know what? I did not die. Amen. And if I want to buy the factory, I could have bought it. Amen. Some kids need to just realize if your parent can't afford it, don't give them the aggravation. And even if they can afford it, don't blackmail them. And some parents are here today. Don't replace yourself with some humongous toy in the life of your child. Teach your child to be diligent. Shut the TV down. Give them TV hours. Give them hours when they can watch. And when that hour is over, go back and read. Go back and study. Go back and prepare. One day they'll be grateful that you, you train them that way. And never let a child tell you, oh, the guy next door, they do so and so. You say, yeah, that's their parent. In this house, 
If you eat the food I provide and sleep on the bed I bought, you live in the house which I paid the mortgage, you shall do what I said. No matter how tall you are, that I started you. Praise God. <laughs> Praise the Lord. So 2 Peter chapter 1 verse 10 says, Therefore, brethren, be even more diligent to make your call and election sure. For if you do these things, you will never stumble. When you are diligent with your call and election, diligent with your Christian life, diligent with your love for God, oh glory. I said glory. Somehow, you find yourself growing, you become the best person you ought to be. Praise the Lord. Diligence in pursuit. Diligence in growing. And when we say diligence, don't quickly go and uproot yourself and plant yourself in something that God had not commissioned you to do so early. Diligence protects your heart from contamination. When you are diligent, next slide, it protects your heart from contamination because you are too busy you are too busy the only time you get contaminated is when you allow people to distract you in the few journeys of i did when i was a young person anytime there was a contamination it was because i was looking at someone else trying to be like them and they have no plan to go anywhere in life and i had a long journey even without being born again i sensed there was a destiny to me I believe there's a destiny to you. Amen. That's why they couldn't kill you. That's why even if they tried to abort you, they could not abort you. And you will arrive at your spiritual destination. Amen. Where God is taking you, you will get there. Amen. Somebody scream, I will, I will get there. The Bible says in the book of Proverbs, chapter 4, verse 23, keep your heart with all diligence. For out of it are the issues of life or forces of life out of your heart it's your heart that is the workshop of everything so keep it with diligence fill it with diligence prepare your heart with diligence prepare your destiny with diligence prepare your future with diligence pursue your dream with diligence praise the lord i say praise the lord when you do this you find yourself increasing there is no room for lazy people in the kingdom of god and if you notice our world in which we live today, it doesn't take too long for people to be forgotten. They, nobody can say, I have cornered anything. You just find that something new rises in the area of your chosen field. And then it just overtakes you because you were not diligent in your journey. But when you are diligent and renewing your mind, renewing your strength, even when people start, they can't overtake you. Because you are continuous, you are consistent in what you are doing. Praise God. Hallelujah. Wealth comes into the hand by diligence. Wealth comes by diligence. If you got it by, by playing the lottery or any game, it doesn't stay. This week, one of the news that trended here in the United Kingdom is the man who died having won the lottery before, won something like I'm not sure the figure now. 101 or 161 million pounds. And within three hours, he's bought a massive house. He and his wife walked through the house, and in 10 minutes, they had paid almost 10 million pounds for the house. If you worked for it, you won't make a 10 minute decision to buy a 10 million pound house. He was spending 100,000 pounds a week. How many saw the news? So that it's not just me alone who saw it. Okay, there are a couple of hands. He was spending 100,000 pounds a week. My mother used to say, whatever you don't work for, don't last. Whatever you don't work for, don't last. 100,000 pounds a week. He died leaving only 50,000 pounds. Because you see, he didn't realize that if you were diligent, you make money multiply. If you are not diligent, you think it's a well from where you drew water. 
And if you draw water from a well, if the well is not replenished, one day you throw your gallon to, pour, to draw water and it's dry. The man lost everything. He died and left to his family 50,000 pounds. I'm sure that's the kind of man his sons who want to show to bury him. Yeah, I had a cousin like that. My grandfather's fourth son, my dad is number six. My grandfather's fourth son had three wives. and was just prejudiced against the children of the first wife. Never trained them. Never did anything for them. They just lived a life that was impossible, difficult. At his death, the man who was supposed to be his firstborn said, oh, you are dead. You know the sons of the people who you decided you are sending to school. Let them come and bury you. And he walked away. And walked away. And you know the man who is on the floor who is dead, they used to call him the wise man. But your wisdom should have taught you how to be diligent and how to manage your affairs. Now his children look at his body and say, oh, the ones you trained, let them come and bury you. Wealth comes to the hand of the diligent. I see you prosper. Amen. I see you increasing. Amen. I see you breaking new grounds, Amen. entering new levels. Amen. God doing awesome things in your life, Amen. silencing the enemy for you. Shout amen with some power. Because the Bible says in the book of Proverbs, chapter 10, verse 4, he who has a slack hand will become poor. But the hand of the diligent will make rich. Praise God. I bless your hand today. I bless your hand today. The lack of today will not stop your blessing of tomorrow. You will excel. 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 You will prosper. The doors will open for you. Favor will rest on your life. Shout amen with some power. The man who despises work has made a choice of a lot. He will just suffer. He will just be like a just like some fat somewhere that's not moving and he has no future. If you make it, if you despise work. You know, there are people here in the United Kingdom, they have strength to work, but because they never acquired any skill, they find that if they work, the difference between their work and social benefits is just a few pennies, so they decide to stay home. Listen, there is dignity in labor. There's dignity in work. There's dignity in waking up and saying, I'm not lying down. I want to contribute to society. I want to make a difference. Ah, I pray for you today. Increase is coming to your life. Grace will rest upon you. You will excel. Somebody scream, I will excel. Say it like you mean it. I will excel. In the name of Jesus. Put your hands together and bless the Lord this morning. Hallelujah. The diligent in Christ is rarely out of supply. They are rarely out of supply. They always have abundance. They always get blessed. Their minds know what to do, where to look, how to work. Praise God. The Bible says, he who tills his land will be satisfied with bread. But he who follows frivolity, frivolity is devoid of understanding. His hand will become idle hands that the devil uses, idle hearts that the devil walks in. May God prosper you this year. Anything you find yourself to do, may you be diligent. Listen, if you work for people, even if they don't appreciate you, Go the extra mile. Do all you can. You, you want to know why? Even if they don't appreciate you, they, you are using their company to train yourself. Amen. The day is going to come when God will promote you. Amen. You see, if you were excellent and you were diligent in another man's thing, when your own thing comes into your hand, you will not be a lazy man. 
My father-in-law used to be a man who owned a furniture company where he made furnitures. And he also had people who were apprenticing under him. Apprenticing under him, learning to be furniture makers. Some of them from graduating under him, they will now go to a proper technical college for the theoretical part. There was a young man who came to be with other apprentices. There were about nine, ten of them. When every apprentice was working diligently, this one will say, they were asking, why are you not doing anything? You say, I'm reserving my energy for when I start my own business. I tell you, the guy is about 75 or 78 now. He's still in reserve. <laughs> All of his life, he was in reserve. He reserved his energy until finally, I can still remember one day I had to, in fact, I was also a member of the church, I had to go to try to plead with his wife who had left home that she's the one having to work, bring money home to feed him, feed herself, feed their children. And I was pleading with her. I, you know, some, some counseling, sometimes you feel like slapping yourself for, counsel, for the counsel. Eventually, the guy had to pack his bag from the city to go live in the village and pack to the house his great-grandfather built. Because that is the final resort for lazy men. They have to go look for some disused nest to perch in. You know, there are some birds. They never build their own nest. They have to look for the nest another bird built that is now broken. They say, I'll manage it. I'll manage it. Or, some, or, or, or some, some animals like snakes, they don't build any nest. They look for a bird nest. There's this bird that builds its nest like a hand like this. When I went to live in the village for one year, I was told, never put your hand in that bird's nest. You know, the old people tell you, because if you put your hand, you'll never be full when you eat. But they were lying. <laughs> it's because there's always a snake there. So they make kids think, I won't be full. I'm not putting my hand there. <laughs> These snakes will go and, and, and enter what somebody else built. That's what lazy people do. They're looking for free food, free accommodation, freebies all of their life. And there are some of them in this London looking for a woman who is desperate for a husband. The one who is a hard-working woman who already has two and a half houses. So they'll say, put my name on the books. Put my name on the document. If I'm preaching, go say amen. amen. He manages to pay one mortgage so that he has evidence he wants paid. Sits at home to eat, watching movies, watching Iroko TV, morning, noon, and night. And then when the lady says, we we'll go separate ways, he goes to the court and say, I want half of everything. Lazy man. You may collect it from him, but God will punish you. members don't know what we go through when we counsel. We see all manners of things. Lazy guy. Never worked. And the girl went to work all through winter, spring, summer, autumn, burning the midnight oil. And he's always, and he's always on the phone to his family. Some of them are abroad, always lying to them. You know, I, I'm right now in, uh, in Bekalu. Did you hear the story of one of them who decided to be a cab driver? Passenger says, I want to go to Oxford Street. He drives and drives and drives and drives and drives and goes past everywhere. So he calls the, the, the base. He says, Roger, Roger, call him base. Oh. He says, Roger, where are you? He says, I can see Oxfordshire. <laughs> Let's close this message. Let's close this message. Told him to take them to Oxford. He goes to Oxfordshire. 
Jesus, man. I like you to say, no room for a lazy man. I like you to announce, I shall excel. Say it again, I shall excel. In the name of Jesus, I will prosper. Put your hands together, give God the biggest praise this morning. Hallelujah. 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 Stand on your feet. May the Lord prosper you. May the Lord increase you. Every limitation in your life is removed. Favor rests on you. Grace rests on you. Blessing rests on you. Testimony follows you. It's going to be a great year for you. It's going to be a year of increase. Year of favor. Year of testimony. Year of open doors. Year of breakthrough. In the name of Jesus. God will silence the enemy. For your sake. Some of you have worked very hard. Everything you've worked for. I declare and decree today. Favor rests on it. Blessing rests on it. This year you will make unusual progress. You will make unusual progress. Your progress will be evident. For every man to see. In the mighty name of Jesus. Shout I receive it. Put your hands together. Give God a praise. Come on. Lama kote kalibra nozai, reke talareba kata tata lereba. And every need in this building today, I declare favor in the name of Jesus. I declare increase in the name of Jesus. Doors opening for you. God stretching His hand, working in your life, proving Himself, silencing the enemy. In the name of Jesus, the sound of good news will be heard in your house. I say again, the sound of good news will be heard in your house. In the name of Jesus, so shall it be. So shall it be in Jesus' name. Praise the Lord one more time. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Praise God, praise God. Praise God, praise God, praise God. Were you blessed this morning? I said, were you blessed? Praise God. Just a couple of announcements. I'm sure you've heard me mention it last Sunday and also during various morning glows. We are about to take a major step here in Hull Street. We're bringing the two services together to make one big humongous service starting 9 a.m. like this starts, but now extending to 11, so that there'll be more worship. How many would like to worship more than we? So there'll be more worship, more time to receive. So you start 9, you finish by 11. Praise God. Also this morning in Prayer City, we shall be laying hand on Pastor Toby Ashimolowo, whose birthday it is. I'll be praying for him. So he now has responsibility as resident pastor too still, but responsible for whole street. This means in effect from now on, instead of having to resume in prayer city every morning, most of the sun, most of the days out of the six days he resumes, he'll probably be here for like four days. People who need counseling don't need to travel to prayer city anymore. People who need to talk to the pastor don't need to travel to prayer city anymore. People who need uh, encouragement don't need to travel to prayer city anymore. We'll also have uh, admin staff here. We'll also have some other people who work with him in, the, in an advisory team. Praise God. And not that alone. Myself and him will be doing tag team, so he preaches two Sundays. I might do two Sundays. I preaches three Sundays. I do one Sunday. So, praise God. We're praying for him this morning. We believe the grace of God is on his life. The hand of God is on his life. He carries a fresh grace, fresh anointing. And we believe that God will use him beyond his own imagination. Beyond his own dreams. In the name of Jesus. The call of God is a call of God. It's not a call of man. I wasn't responsible for whatever he's doing. He chose of his own volition, having heard God to go to Bible school of his own volition. I wanted him to live and run a business in Africa. I said, no, the Lord is asking me to serve in ministry. I'm coming back to England. 
So all the money I spent buying a house, Jesus, man, we had to sell the house at a, at a loss practically, but yeah, we have to follow the leading of God. And his pursuit of God is totally because he knows God by himself. Yeah. Some of the things the young man would try, I me, mean, I'm not trying it to. Sometimes you do seven days fast, uh, drive fast. Jesus, man, I'll, I've graduated out of that one. <laughs> The other time he did 19 days. I said, stop, don't try it again. Praise God. Because he desires grace. He desires the hand of God and he desires the favor of God. I want you to know this is going to make us strengthen whole street. All the ministers who are here will now be available so that uh, we're not having to all the time run to press. It is a long journey for many people. How many are excited about this? Give God praise. Come on, give God praise. Praise the Lord. There are many of the key events and key services we hold here in Hall Street. They will continue. One of them is our, our February um, revival. So, overflowing streams will be holding from the 19th to the 24th of February here in whole street praise the lord it's going to be five days of the outpouring of grace outpouring of healings outpouring of miracles it's going to be absolutely awesome now the two services becoming one starts next sunday somebody scream next sunday, next sunday. so on our, on our advertising you're going to begin to see something that says the big one the big one so we're starting the big one from next Sunday, praise God, praise God, praise God. I'm even surprised they didn't have the big one ready for today. Did they put it? Oh, all right, okay. All right, praise the Lord. So the big one is from next Sunday. From next Sunday, the big one. Also from today in prayer city. Oh yeah, okay. The big one. So from today in Prayer City, we have seven Sundays of the prophetic. It's going to be a time of revelation, transformation, release of grace, specific word into people's lives. And the blessings of God will be upon it in Jesus' name. Amen. Pastor Toby continues to still be responsible for the young people. So pray for him yeah. as he wear many caps. And so the, you, the, the royals have flow. On the 31st of January, which is this week, Tuesday. It's a night of just worship here and prayer in whole street. If I were you, even if I'm not royal, I'll just go. I'm not uh, their age group. You are royal. You find a place to hide and just come and worship with them. Praise the Lord. So there's worship here at 7 p.m. by the royals on Tuesday. Amen. I said Amen. The French service continues by 2 p.m. in this building. That does not change. The French service continues. And when you be overflow again and we have to start a second service, we make an arrangement with the French service. Praise the Lord. I said praise the Lord. So please remember this announcement. And tonight, I want to believe God that this year is going to be a year of rest. No hassle for you. Everything that wants to give you nightmare, no, not your portion. Yeah. So tonight's service in prayer city is night of rest. A season of rest. Anointing of rest. Blessing of rest. Breakthrough of rest. Open door of rest. Favor of rest. Everything that gives you a rest of mind. Not you pursuing and almost dying before it happened. This is going to be a year of rest. So tonight's evening service is very, 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 very unique. It's a night of rest. A night of rest. Don't miss it by any chance. Make sure you join us. Something will be poured out tonight that will be so awesome. That will be so powerful. Complete rest will be your portion. Physical rest. Spiritual rest. Financial rest. Relationship rest. Divine rest. Anointed rest. Uncommon rest. Oh, tonight is awesome. Rest for you. Rest for your family. And rest from some troublesome family members. Yes. Hey, rest. It's going to be a great night. Don't miss it. The anointing will be on the service and the power of God will be manifest. Stand on your feet. The Lord bless you. The Lord keep you. 
strengthen you lift you up give you victory favor you put testimony in your mouth put celebration in your life in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus shout amen with power amen. two more announcements if it's your first time of worshiping with us please don't rush away we have ministers here who are ready to minister to you you are our guest we like you to come to the front here we like you to come to the front we like you to come to the front there's a guest welcoming team waiting to welcome you all those who are worshiping with us for the first time please come to the front we're waiting for you amen, amen. and then the second announcement of course like on Wednesday we started the power of meditating on the word ah Wednesday was so awesome so I like to encourage you make sure you tune in not only to morning glow but Wednesday Bible study we are looking at the power of meditating the word so that the only thing you speak the things you think are saturated by the word when your life is saturated by the word <laughs> you have victory you have testimony praise the Lord if you want to wait for the next service you'll be blessed it's a message that has to do with the keys of the kingdom I hope you have the keys God bless you richly and God lift you up Remember again, next Sunday is the big one. Someone say the big one. Yeah. All right, we'll see you at the big one. God bless, God bless, God bless, God bless, God bless. We're glad you watched today's service. For prayer, call 020-8525-0000 or text to share your testimony. Prayer works at Prayer City. See you next time. We're glad you watched today's service. For prayer, call 020-8525-0000 or text to share your testimony. Prayer works at Prayer City. See you next time.